Hello guys and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining who is the Financial Ombudsman Service. Thank you for watching the video so far. Remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell to help with the YouTube algorithm. Now back to the video. Now, if you're looking for an answer about who they are, basically the Financial Ombudsman Service is an ombudsman in the UK and it was established in 2000 and given statutory powers or legal powers in 2001 to help settle disputes between consumers and UK based um, financial services providers, such as banks, building societies, insurance companies, investment firms, financial advisors and finance companies. Now, the reason that they exist is because um, basically, let's say you go to your, in my case, I've got an example. Let's say you go to your bank, okay? Like in the past, they've given you a loan which uh, was unaffordable or there was something that caused you um, things, things to go bad for you financially because of the service they provided. Then um, you've gone to them, they have rejected your complaint which is probably what will happen 99% of the time, to be perfectly honest, from experience. Um, then you can then take the complaint to the Financial Ombudsman Service. However, there are strict time limits of when you can do that. So for example, if you had a complaint going back to the year 1985, that's too late. <laughs> you know, there is a set amount of time. So it's within a certain number of years. I'm not going to say, say when, just in case it changes when I record the video, but a certain amount of time or within a certain amount of time of you reasonably knowing that you could go to the financial ombudsman service. Now, I didn't even know the financial ombudsman service existed before I used them the first time, simple as that. And the reason I knew is because when my um, bank um, rejected my complaint, they then gave me all the information about the financial ombudsman service. They gave me a leaflet. They said that if you're not happy with our conclusion, please take it to Financial Ombudsman Service, which I believe is actually a legal requirement for them to do in the UK. So uh, the way that they work basically is that they will look at both sides of the argument and they will try and be as impartial and as fair as possible. And they will then say, okay, this is what we believe the conclusion for this dispute should be based on all the factors. And this process can take a very long time. It could take several months. But the Ombudsman Service does have the legal power to enforce, for example, let's say they side with the consumer to enforce financial compensation or changes to the consumer's credit file or apologies or so on. They have the legal power to enforce that, uh, which is great because simply if um, financial institutions were self-regulated, then 99% of the time they'll basically blame you for everything and then um, just keep all your money, <laughs> which I'm sure is part of the reason why the Financial Ombudsman Service exists. So, uh, and uh, from my personal experience, like I've put in personal complaints against uh, previous loans, payday loans. Apparently I had a PPI as well. I didn't even know, but that's the whole point of the PPI um, scandal. And um, every single time there's not been a single financial institution bank lender or otherwise that said to me we agree with your complaint and we're going to compensate you it's never happened every single time it has been basically it's your fault and we owe you nothing that's basically the conclusion so um now the reason why I would say it's important to know who the Financial Ombudsman Service is, is just so that you know that you actually have rights in these situations. If you feel 100% and you have proof, that's the important thing, you actually have proof that you've been wronged by a financial institution, then the Financial Ombudsman Service is the basically the last step you can go to. It's almost like a tribunal, except you don't have to be involved. So you'll never need to, for example, go to court or anything like that. If it goes that far, if the financial institution and the Ombudsman Service want to have a legal battle or fight in court in front of a judge, that'll be between them. It won't be between you. And that is all detailed in the leaflet that they give you. It's all explained. So, but what's really, really important is that when you bring a complaint, you have all of the evidence that you need. You have dates, you have times, you have, for example, credit agreements, 
you have any emails or any communication letters that went between you and to show for example how or why the financial institution is wrong so now legally financial institutions only have to keep their financial records for something like six i think six years in the uk so um, if your dispute is older than that then there could be some complications of uh, going forward with the complaints but that is handled very very uh, diligently by the financial ombudsman service and generally as well they tend to have a very good filtering system so if from the outset they think that there's no chance a complaint could materialize into anything it will be rejected like very very quickly so that you can move on with your life <laughs> let's say but um, if it can be resolved then potentially it can go higher it can go eventually to an investigator and then the investigator will look at all the like all the evidence and so on he will make a decision and then if you're not happy or the other side are not happy they can go to an ombudsman an actual ombudsman to make a final decision and that decision can't be as effectively disputed unless it goes to court to a judge so um like the ombudsman's decision usually is final so and what generally will happen from what i've seen this is not fact this is not whatever this is just from what i have observed is that if an investigator for example sides that um you know the one side is right the other side is uh, wrong in this dispute most of the time from what i've seen the ombudsman will agree uh, because simply the investigator will not reach uh, their decision without considering all the evidence in front of them but it's not to say it's impossible to get it turned around like it, it is possible and you never know uh to, if you if you still believe even after the investigator has um given his decision that you you know things are still wrong you can take it even higher so um like it's down to you basically like how far you want to push it but that's why the financial ombudsman service exists and that's what they're for. I believe the US equivalent is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That's the US equivalent for any of my US viewers. But for the UK, it's the Financial Ombudsman Service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link as many useful resources in the description box below, including to the official website, to the Wikipedia page and so on. In the future, I'm probably going to make more videos about it because you can see it's right here, right on the on the homepage about this is where you make a complaint but i think it's really really important that you do have all of your facts straight before you start this process and as i said be ready to um you know wait a long time <laughs> but it could be you know it could be uh worth it in the long run and you can see right at the top they've got uh, decisions and case studies in case you want to see examples of other cases that have been going on now because of what's going on in the world right now the illness um, is obviously impacted everything so um, a lot of people are working from home including members of the financial ombudsman service so things can take a bit longer to resolve so but as i recommend get your facts straight get all the evidence in the world make sure it's all filed properly and that you can easily refer to it and you can provide it if asked for it so that before you go down this road um, there isn't any consequence if you go down the road and you're not prepared it's just a case of if you lose the case then it's going to be very hard to reopen it <laughs> so like don't like open the case and then think oh i'll get the evidence later and so on because when they've made their decision then like i said it could it can extend the amount of time it could take for the issue to be resolved but at the same time do not let that be the reason you, you then file it late because if you file it late then um, it could be rejected uh, straight away just on the fact that you filed it late so um, as I say with the financial ombudsman service from my experience they're very nice you know from I've I've dealt with many people over the phone different departments different whatever and they've been very nice to me they've been very polite and so on so and I've had uh, issues about uh, PPI that I've, I'm handling an unaffordable loan payday loans and so on so um, yeah like I would say read about them do research if you are in this situation if you're watching this video and you watch it to this point you're probably very curious about who the financial 
financial ombudsman service is simple as that so hopefully this will give you a step in the right direction please let me know in those comments down below as well have you used the financial ombudsman service have you used any other ombudsmans like there are other ombudsmans for other uh, sectors but this one is focused on the financial one and as well it's down to you it's down to you it's a case of i feel that a lot of times these uh, disputes could be avoided if more due diligence is done from both sides early on and then there wouldn't be any disputes about anything but it's a case of when we had the uh, payday loan for example issues several years ago then it would it did lead to a lot of problems uh, uh, financial companies not doing proper credit checks for example doing affordability checks because for example now there is hard caps of how much debt you can actually have based on your income but again, I will cover that probably in a future video. So um, let me know your experiences in those comments down below. Um, like, I hope this has at least pointed you a little bit in the direction. It, there's a lot more com like complexity to this than I've stated, but hopefully this will be a basic introduction for you. And yeah, uh, it's simple the case of that's who the financial ombudsman service is. That's why they exist and that's the authority they have. Anyway, guys, I've linked two other videos to this video. Please check out my channel. On the channel, the goal is to work towards financial independence, clear debt, and um, manage your life, basically, towards that goal, and then to improve your personal finance and work towards a financial independence goal. So please check out my other videos.